Dracula, the editorial director of Biofarm International, and I'm here today with Ray O'Connor, an operations consultant with the National Institute for Bioprocess Research and Training. NIBRT provides training, educational, and research solutions for the international bioprocessing industry and state-of-the-art facilities located in South Dublin and is based on an innovative collaboration between University College Dublin, Trinity College Dublin, Dublin City University, and the Institute of Technology, Sligo. Today we're talking about fill finish and aseptic processing. Thank you, Ray, for joining me today. Uh, you're welcome, Angie. But why is aseptic processing critical for injectables such as vaccines and other biologic-based products? Certain pharmaceutical products must be sterile as they are introduced to the patient by injection, and this mode of drug delivery bypasses the body's natural defenses. Therefore, there is an increased risk of infection being introduced to the patient. Sterile drug products can be manufactured using two techniques, either terminal sterilization or through aseptic processing. Now, terminal sterilization usually involves heat or radiation, However, quite a large proportion of vaccines and biological-based drugs can be destroyed by exposure to heat or irradiation, hence the requirement to manufacture it in an aseptic manner. According to the FDA guidance for industry on sterile drug products produced by aseptic processing in September 2004, it states that an aseptic process, the drug product, container, and closure are first subjected to sterilization methods separately as appropriate and then brought together. Because there is no process to sterilize the product in its final container, it is critical that containers be filled and sealed in an extremely high-quality environment. Therefore, aseptic processing involves more variables than ter just terminal, ter than terminal sterilization. Therefore, before aseptic assembly into a final product, the individual parts of the final product are generally subjected to various sterilization processes. Now, and similarly, in, in the EU, the guidelines to good manufacturing practices would state that the manufacturer of sterile products is subject to special requirements in order to minimize the risk of microbial contamination and of particulate and pyrogen contaminant. So, as a result of this, much depends on the skill, training, and attitudes of the people involved in the aseptic processing. Um, it's particularly important that this type of manufacture must strictly follow carefully established and validated methods of preparation and procedure. Sole reliance for sterility or other quality aspects would not be placed on any terminal process or finished product testing. Therefore, aseptic processing reduces the risk of infecting the patient while delivering the medication. And so, um, to summarize, aseptic processing is minimizing the risk of introducing any uh, contaminant, any microbial contaminant into your product as you move it through the manufacturing process. Thank you for explaining that. Now, aseptic processing and the term fill finish are often used interchangeably throughout the industry. Are these two terms truly the same or are there are unique steps for each? So, I suppose fill finish is a discrete part of the manufacturing process. Um, if you have an upstream or a downstream process, that would be where you would manufacture your, um, in your traditional pharmaceutical products, your API. Fill finish is your filling and uh, packaging uh, part of it. It comes after the product has been manufactured and ready to put into its final package container that the patient will see. Now, aseptic processing refers to the various techniques that go into ensuring that the product is free of contaminants therefore reducing the risk of infection to the patient. This can happen, and it does typically happen, at um, upstream of filled finish as well. It can happen in uh, the uh, upstream and uh, downstream parts of the API manufacturing process as well. Um, aseptic processing is the processing of drug components, drug product containers, excipients in a manner that precludes microbial contamination of the final sealed product. Great, thank you. What type of equipment is used for aseptic processing? Um, the, I suppose the major piece of equipment would be um, a clean room. It's vital to have a clean room in order to do your aseptic processing. Um, within clean rooms, you would typically then have laminar airflow hoods, autoclaves for uh, sterilizing your um, equipment, depyrogenation tunnels for removing any endotoxins. You would also need to have automated cleaning systems for reducing any low levels of contaminants um, prior to sterilizing. You would also have isolators which would have filling lines installed in them. These would be um, units where 
they're totally enclosed and have a localized area of what would be called grade A air inside in them where the filling line would uh, basically fill the product into either vials or syringes. You may also have um, restricted access barrier systems or RABS units, um, various environmental monitoring devices, filters, obviously very important in aseptic processing as well um, in order to remove any contaminants. And uh, what's becoming more and more prevalent these days is the use of single-use disposable systems as well. It sounds like definitely clean rooms is the main type of equipment. Can you talk about um, more details about those rooms and the garments that are required? Sure. Um, so, yeah, clean rooms are definitely required for aseptic processing. Uh, there would be a number of different standards around clean rooms, but the international standards 146441 states that a clean room is a room in which the concentration of airborne particles is controlled and which is constructed and used in a manner to minimize the introduction and generation and retention of particles inside the room, and in which other relevant parameters, example, temperature, humidity, and pressure, are controlled as necessary. Now, within the clean room, the critical components are that you have a, a high-efficiency particulate air filters on the ceilings, um, filtering all the air that is coming into the clean room. You would then have exhaust vents at floor level or even on the floor, this would ensure that you get laminar airflow and you get a good removal of air, and so you get uh, many air changes per hour, typically from five to 500. You would not have drains inside an aseptic processing area in a clean room. Air locks are very important so that you can uh, facilitate the movement of people and equipment from one area of a uh, clean room into uh, another area. Um, it's important that the clean rooms are designed appropriately such that you have seamless and rounded floor-to-wall junctions uh, to prevent uh, build-up of any contamination or water sitting in any of these areas. Floors and walls and ceilings must be constructed of smooth, hard surfaces that can be easily cleaned. You want to limit the amount of fixtures and fittings on the walls um, to facilitate the ease of cleaning of walls. And layout of equipment must be optimized for the comfort of the and movement of, of people. Now, I already mentioned ISO 14644. In Europe, the classifications are then divided into class A, B, C, and D, where A is the most stringent and D being the least exacting. In the US, um, standards FED, standard 209, the room classifications would, you would come across are class 100, class 1000, class 10,000, and class 100,000. Uh, as I said, the ISO standards would then would be 5, 6, 7, and 8. And the standards in general, um, sorry, the standards in general then would be uh, talking about particle sizes in the range of 0.5 microns to 5 microns. The um, three different standards are used interchangeably depending on where your site is located and where you're being regulated. So if you're to be regulated by an FDA site, they would use the class 100. 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000. Similarly, if you're using the um, European standard, you will be talking about class A, B, C, and D. What would happen in these different classifications? For example, a class A air area will be the highest um, standard, and the local zone for high-risk operation, example, the filling zone, stopper bowls, open amp pools, vials, um, or making aseptic connections will be done in a grade A area. A grade B area might be for aseptic preparation and filling. Grade C might be for clean areas for preparation of solutions when unusually at risk. And grade D, which would be the dirtiest areas, the equivalent to class 100,000, um, would be for preparation of solutions and components for subsequent filling. Um, the, as I mentioned already, the typical air changes would be between five and 500 times per hour. Hence, it's very important that the exhaust vents are not blocked. If these were blocked, this would reduce the level of laminar airflow and um, a laminar airflow is where air flows in a single direction and minimizes turbulent air. So the particle size is there. Oh no, scrap that part, sorry. Um, next is microbial monitoring. is also required to demonstrate the microbial cleanliness of the clean room during production. The recommended limits are specific for the different room classifications. And so for a grade B room has a specification of not more than 10 colony forming units per meter cubed. And based on the different grades, you will have different specifications. Um, as well as just um, air samples for viable monitoring, you will also have settled plates where you will allow air to settle onto uh, plates 
which will support the growth of, of bacteria. You can see how much bacteria might be in the environment. Contact plates, which may be put up against walls and surfaces, and then glove prints in grade A and B areas where people would actually put their fingers, their gloved fingers, onto the plates to see if there's any contamination there. Um, with these, you're going to have limits. As I mentioned, um, in a grade B room, 10 colony forming units. Um, it's very important that you trend these limits, otherwise you will not be able to determine if you are in control or not, or if you are beginning to move out of control. And if you move out of control, it puts the product at risk, so it's best to, to trend to see if these things are getting worse over time. Okay, well, thank you for explaining the airflow and some of the environmental okay. uh, checks that are used in clean rooms, um, and, and you started to mention control. What, what sort of control mm -hmm. systems need to be used in these septic processing? The control systems, uh, the, the goal of the environmental monitoring program is to, to provide meaningful information on the quality of the aseptic processing. So the controls you would typically see would be airborne, non-viable contaminant monitoring. So this is just looking at basically the number of particles that you have present in the room. Um, airborne, viable contaminant monitoring, which is where you would have, uh, you're looking at the amount of microbes specifically in the room. Then viable contaminant monitoring of surfaces, as I mentioned, where you would touch the surfaces with agar plates. Viable monitoring of, of personnel, and then temperature and humidity monitoring. Um, the environmental monitoring, it's important that um, it's done across all different shifts. Typically, um, these types of plants work on a number of different shifts, so it's important that all operators and all technicians um, get a chance to be tested. All floors, walls, equipment, and surfaces, including critical surfaces, need to be tested. The location of the surfaces to be sampled and the timing and the frequency of the sampling should be specified in writing so that it's not just a random process, but it's risk assessed and it's done where the greatest risk is, is defined. And it's important that it's sufficiently detailed to, to ensure uh, reproducible results. The um, heating and ventilation and air conditioning unit, the HVAC unit, will need mm -hmm. to be under the control of the building management system. Um, it is what controls the amount of air coming into the um, clean rooms, and it is controlling the differential pressure across the, the HEPA filters. So if it begins to see any changes in the differential pressure, it should alarm and uh, actions or alerts should be raised and investigations should be initiated uh, such that um, any problems associated with the HEPA filters can be identified up front and the corrective actions put in place before there's any impact on the product. So that will be controlled through your building management system. Okay. And I do want to step back just a little bit to the goal of aseptic processing, which is avoiding contamination in the product. Can you provide us with a brief overview of the types of contamination uh, that may occur? Sure. Um, so contamination, uh, obviously, in our industry is, is has serious health effects on, on the patient. The different types of contamination you might consider would be bacteria, which could cause an infection in someone who is already ill, thus making the actual condition worse. Chemicals, um, which obviously could cause poisoning or other effects on the patient. So if you're in a multi-product facility, uh, cross-contamination from one product to another, again, these are products that are being injected into the patient. Um, so if you have uh, a different product or contamination from a previous batch of a different product that could have serious effects on a patient. Physical contamination, which um, could be particulates, and these can cause, again, serious problems such as cuts, blockage, or even death. Um, so going back to the bacterial contaminants, viable particles are a particular concern for the biopharma industry. If they enter a product, they will multiply rapidly, and it's, you're, you're looking at um, doubling times of maybe 20 minutes under the right conditions. So any bacteria or, or anything like that that gets into the system, it will actually um, overpower the um, product that you're actually trying to make, and um, you may end up losing the product and definitely cause contamination to the product. Biopharmaceutical drugs are biologics and therefore to a bacterium that is simply a, a source of food. So you can see how they can grow rapidly and take over the, the process effectively. All stages of biopharmaceutical manufacture, you will be handling a biological feed stream, which provides a perfect environment for the microbes to grow and to proliferate. Sorry, to, to grow and to proliferate. Therefore, the critical need for aseptic manufacturing techniques. 
And just to give you an idea as to uh, the types of where this contamination can come from, most of it is actually coming from human beings. Mm -hmm. There's over 200 different species of bacteria found associated with humans. They're found in the intestines, the eyes, the ears, the nose, the mouth, hair and skin. And dry skin can have uh, over thousands of microbes per millimeter squared. Hence, it's, it's vitally important that when you walk into a clean room or work in a clean room, you're appropriately garbed um, to ensure that you have minimal exposure of your skin to the environment. Uh, to summarize, there are five main routes of entry of any type of contaminant. Raw materials, so all the raw materials that are used in the manufacturing of the product, they're all a potential source of contaminant. And so uh, the quality systems associated with the supply and release of them to the manufacturing processes is absolutely critical. The plant or the process, poorly sanitized equipment, dead legs in the plant can all lead to contamination. Your environment, uh, the clean room design, as mentioned previously, movement of personnel, um, it's important that people move in a controlled and, and uh, deliberate fashion in a clean room and erratic behavior because it can generate particles um, is discouraged. Count, uh, people, as I mentioned already, are probably 80 to 90 percent of the source of contamination. So good gowning be behavior and training in aseptic technique and aseptic processing is absolutely vital. Um, and then, as I mentioned previously, your, your product, if you're in a multi-product facility, it's important, it's vital that you don't have cross-contamination from one product to another. Various analytics and testing are involved in aseptic processing, including sampling, validation, and identification. Can you talk about some of the major considerations manufacturers need to keep in mind for this part of aseptic processing? So, yeah, sampling, obviously, is, is an important part. Um, it's testing to see if your process is in control throughout the, the manufacturing. Um, so before you have approved your process, you would have validated the process, and that would have required uh, quite a, an extensive battery of tests that would be done on the product, both from a protein characterization or a process characterization, as well as from a contamination minimization. One of the key things when you're taking samples uh, for biologics is that you don't actually contaminate the product or the sample itself while you are um, taking the sampling which could lead to false positives. Typically samples are taken to determine if there has been a microbial contamination and the samples will be incubated in a broth or an agar and if growth is observed then this may indicate that there's a problem or that you have a contamination. Um, uh, the um, samples will also be pulled for endotoxin testing. So after you have sterile filtered your product, um, if, if it's possible to do that, you will pull a sample and an endotoxin test will be performed. Endotoxins, these are lipopolysaccharides that come from the cell membrane of bacteria, of gram-negative bacteria. So if any of these are present, um, it would indicate that you have not maintained um, an aseptic process and therefore the product would be at risk. Well, thank you so much, Ray, for walking us through this overview of aseptic processing. I appreciate your time and your expertise. You're welcome. Thank you.